What's up, Algebra Bros? In this video, I'm going to help you list the potential rational zeros of a particular polynomial function. And that's it. We're not actually going to find the zeros. Uh, that would be left for a different video. Um, but this is basically a shout out to the rational zeros theorem, which states that um, if there are any rational zeros of a polynomial function, they're going to be of the form plus or minus p over q, where uh, p is a factor of the constant term, I'll call it a sub zero, not the modal combat character though, and then q is a factor of a sub n, which is the leading coefficient. So for this reason, uh, this is sometimes called the p over q method. Now in our polynomial function, we have a constant term of 4, so 4 is a sub 0, and then uh, we have a leading coefficient of 10, so this represents a sub n. So what this amounts to is making a list of factors of each of these two numbers, and then forming all the possible fractions with uh, the factors of a sub 0 as the numerator, and the factors of a sub n as the denominator, or as Arnold would say, the denominator. Uh, but anyway, uh, there are going to be three lists here. Uh, the first list is for p, which I guess I'll go underneath the answer choices with this. And we have to figure out all the numbers that go into 4, including the negatives. That would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. And then we need to make a list for q, all the divisors of 10, including the negatives. That'd be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 10. And now we'll make our final list. And it'll be of all the fractions that can be formed with um, 1, 2, and 4 as a numerator, and 1, 2, 5, and 10 as the denominator. And of, cor of course, we'll uh, include plus or minus in front of each of those uh, fractions. So I'm going to start with uh, the p value of 1. So our first fraction is going to be 1 over 1, plus or minus. Our next fraction is going to be plus or minus 1 over 2. And then continue on, plus or minus 1 over 5. And then plus or minus 1 over 10. We'll move on to a numerator of 2, so that's going to be plus or minus 2 over 1, then plus or minus 2 over 2, which you can cross that out. We already have it in our list. That's the same as 1 over 1, or simply 1, plus or minus 2 over 5, and then plus or minus 2 over 10, which you can cross that out because that reduces to 1 fifth, which is something we already have in our list. Then we'll have plus or minus 4 over 1, plus or minus 4 over 2. If we can cross that out, we have that in our list already. That's plus or minus 2 in disguise, plus or minus 4 over 5, and then plus or minus 4 over 10, which we can cross that out because that's already in our list as plus or minus 2 over 5. So what I'm going to do next is uh, just kind of rewrite this list so that uh, it, it sort of matches better with uh, one of these answer choices. Um, so clearly we have plus or minus 1. Uh, so if you look at the answer choices, you know, they're, they're writing that uh, kind of split up, negative 1, comma 1. Uh, we also have negative 2 and positive 2 in this list. So negative 2, positive 2. Um, we also have uh, positive 4, negative 4, or I'll write negative 4, comma, positive 4. And then we get into our fractions. So we're looking at um, comma, negative 1 half, comma, positive 1 half, then negative 1 fifth, comma, positive 1 fifth. We also have negative 1 tenth positive one-tenth, 
2 fifths, negative 2 fifths, or simply negative 2 fifths, comma 2 fifths. And then we also have negative 4 fifths, comma, positive 4 fifths. So if we look at the answer choices here, um, they, they really do resemble each other a whole bunch, but uh, we can eliminate a couple of these uh, options, um, three of them actually. Uh, if you look at option B, uh, th at the tail end they have negative five-fourths and positive five-fourths. Uh, that's actually the reciprocal of negative four-fifths and positive four-fifths, so option B doesn't work. Um, we can eliminate option C because of the uh, really the same reason. Now, if you look at the fractions towards the end, those don't line up with anything in our list. And if you look at option D, option D is missing some of our uh, fractions that we have in our list. So all in all, um, you know, writing out these fractions and maybe doing a little bit of uh, elimination of the other options uh, will help us hone in on the official answer here of option A. And there we have it. That's how you can find a list of the poten uh, potential rational zeros of a polynomial function. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.